Hey everyone, welcome. In this episode, we're going to talk about the umask command inside of Linux, as well as some special file permissions. So starting with umask, this is used to define the default file permissions. So when we are in a directory, we can create a file, and we can see the permissions with ls-l, and then put the file name, and you can see that's what they are. Now we can do a similar thing for a directory, so we'll say mkdir, and I don't know, I'll just call it files, I, I literally can't think of anything. Now if you want to see the permissions of this, you don't say ls-l files, because that's actually going to see what's inside of the files directory. Instead, you want to say ls-l dot for the current directory, or just leave that dot off of there because it's implied. So that's going to show everything including the files directory here. So here are the default permissions for a directory. So how do you see what these default permissions are? Or how do you quantify it, I guess? Well, you can type umask and you get a number, in this case 0002. This is a representation of those default permissions. So when we take a look at that file again, how does this number give us this value? Well, if you remember when we were talking about the chmod command, we talked about how each position had some value and you could represent it with octal. Well, it's a similar thing here where this has the value 1, this has the value 2, and this has the value 4. So all of them together is 7. And pretty much what this mask is going to do is it's going to grab the position 2 and any position that it hits, it's going to remove those permissions. So it's going to remove the right permission here. So you can change the umask by saying umask and we'll just go with 0000. zero, zero, zero. And we'll talk about why there's four here in a moment. We might be used to seeing three with chmod. And now let's create another file. We'll say file2, ls-l file2. And you can see we now have read and write permissions on all of them. That's because the umask, or the default permissions, are zero. So we're not going to remove any of the read or write permissions. So you can think about if we have no umask and we don't mess with anything, then the permissions are going to be read and write for user, group, and everyone. If we want to change that, that's where the umask comes in, which will change the default. And now let's talk about how we can change these numbers to get different permissions. So let's say we wanted to get rid of the read permission for each one of these. Well, it would look like this. We would say umask, and you start with a zero, and then the read permissions have the value four. So we'd say 0444, and then let's just try this out. We'll say touch file three ls-l, file 3, and you can see we got rid of value 4, 4, and 4. Comparing that to the other files, we had these before, so we got rid of r, r, and r, and we're just left with the right permissions. If you wanted to default with no permissions, you would say umask 0777, which would remove any permissions, and we'll try this out, touch file 4, ls-l and you can see the progression here so now we have no permissions at all another way we can think about this is actually work with binary which might be a little bit more visual it does the same thing works the same way but instead of thinking one two and four and all these weird values you can actually write out the number in binary and anywhere there's a one a permission will be removed so let's take a look at it well, first, let's go ahead and change umask back to the default 0002. All right, perfect. So when we create a file, it looks like this on the permissions. And each permission here can be represented as a 1 or a 0. And we can think about them in groups of 3. So we'll start with this group here. You could represent that as 1, 1, 0. This next group, similar thing. 1, 1, 0. And then this final group here, which now that I think about it, is kind of confusing because this is actually the permissions for the group. So maybe calling these groups is a little confusing. But this next section here would be 1, 0, 0. So these are our permissions. And then if we created a umask, we can remove any of these permissions by using the value 1. So let's say we wanted to remove the read permission, we would say 1. If we wanted to keep these the same, which you don't have to worry about execute in this case, you would just say 0, 0. And let's say for the next one, we wanted to remove the write permission, but keep read. So we would say 0, 1, 0. And then for this last one, let's go ahead 
and remove the read permission 100. Zero, zero. So basically you're going to take this value, pass it through this value, and anywhere these ones clash you're going to remove those permissions. But you're still going to use the same exact umask syntax, but you're going to just take these values and convert them to decimal. So you can do that with any online converter. So you can take your value and I'm just literally just looked up binary to decimal converter. You can enter a binary value, convert, and that's where you get that number four from. So our command would be umask, start with a zero because it's a four digit number, and then we would say four. For this next one, we would take 0, 1, 0, copy that, paste that here, get the value 2. And this next one, take 1, 0, 0, convert that, and we get the value 4. So this would be the umask to change the default permissions, and this only affects new files, so touch file 6, ls-l file 6, and there you go. So we got rid of the read and we got rid of the right. And a similar thing can work with directories too, so if you want to try that out, you can. Now, the next question is, why is this a group of four? Well, file permissions are actually in groups of four. When you use chmod, you know, when we say something like chmod 777 or whatever, well, you can actually put another number on the left here that can mean something else. And these are special file permissions. Now, I'm fairly new to these, I haven't really used them a whole lot, so I'm just going to give you an introduction. And then if you feel like, oh, hey, that's something that would be useful to me, you can do the extra research, but this will just get you started. So basically, there's three special file permissions, and you can use them by using the value one, two, or four. One is called the sticky bit, two is called the set GID bit, and then four is called the set UID bit. Set UID can be used with scripts to allow them to access pseudo privileges. Set group ID will give files within a directory the group owner of the directory rather than the group owner of the creator of the file. So that's a little confusing, but I'll show you an example of that. And sticky bit allows you to control the deletion of files inside of directories. So if we create a directory, we'll just call it test and we say chmod, and just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna give full permissions to this directory, and we'll just say test there. I'm going to change directory into test, and I'm going to create a test file one, and now I'm going to switch user over to another user, and I'm going to create test file two. Now when we say ls-l, we can see the permissions for these files as well as the owners, so here is the first file we created, and then here is the second file we created. If we now take a look at the file permissions inside of the parent directory, we can see the test directory down here and the group owner of parallels. We can use the set group ID so that any files created inside of this directory will always have the group ID parallels instead of in this case, it has the value students so I'll show you how to do that. Let's just clear the screen to get a clean slate. Plus then if I screw anything up, I can make it look like I edited it and it was perfect. And what we're gonna do is we're going to say chmod. I'll keep the same file permissions in this case, but now we are going to add another number here, which is the value two. And we're going to change the current directory. We will need to prefix this with sudo. And now when we take a look at the file permissions, let's go ahead and create a new file. We'll say touch test file three, and then ls-l. You can see the group owner is parallels. And where can you visualize this? Well, we can get the file permissions of the parent directory. And you can see inside a test, we have this new permission here, which is an S. So that is an example of how to use the set group ID. If you want some extra research, you can look up how to work with the set user ID as well as the sticky bit. So again, I just wanted to show you the basics of that. I haven't really used these much beyond this video, but I just wanted to introduce that concept in case you needed it for future stuff.
it could be handy if you pretty much want a directory that always has the same group owner, which might come in handy if you're trying to do some group work and you want all the files in there to have the same permissions for a specific group. So that was a lot in this episode. Hopefully it was helpful with something. A little bit more wordy and detailed than the previous episodes, so hopefully I didn't lose you. Thank you for watching so much. Stay tuned for the episodes in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.